What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 67 of the Having Report podcast with myself, your host, Brad Mines. Bitcoin bounces back up to 24,000 US dollars, but we are far from full recovery. We are one year and nine months away from the next Bitcoin halving. The Blockchain Futurist Conference is the largest cryptocurrency and blockchain event in Canada, taking place August 9th and 10th. We will see you there on both days. Feel free to approach myself or my team members there, Chris, Quincy Q. McCall, Todd, T-O-double-D Napper, or the big dog, J-Y Justin Young. Use our promo code, the Having 25 while purchasing your ticket for 25% off. Today's guest, we have the author of the Book of Satoshi, which is a compilation of all of the synonymous creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto's writings in regard to the protocol. Let's dive right into today's interview with Phil Champagne. Phil, welcome to episode 67 of the Having Report podcast. Thanks for doing this today, man. All right, thank you. Uh, you know, if, if you don't mind, if you can just give yourself a introduction for those of my listeners who may not know who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so my name is Phil Champagne, and I'm I wrote the the book of Satoshi, which is a, a collection of the writings of Sat, um, Satoshi Nakamoto. I, uh, my background is in uh, electrical engineering at the University of Sherbrooke in um, Quebec, Canada. And from there, I went to software engineering, actually, and eventually uh, moved to California. And in the early 2000s, I discovered the, uh, um, starting to discover real estate, and uh, it led eventually to um, the Austrian School of Economy, with the 2008 crash, learning all about that. And, uh, you know, it was a, re- a lot of reading after that. And, um, and eventually in 2012, I've learned about Bitcoin and I uh, started trying to understand a little bit more about its origin. And uh, that's how it came to be. And do, do you think your background in Austrian economics kind of led you down that path? Or is it too relatable? Uh, yeah. So basically the combination of software engineering and that allowed me to look at it from a perspective of finance and as economics as well as the software beyond that yeah and so what came over you what made you decide that you want to make the book of satoshi that what was the reason for you thinking you know this is a a great idea to compile all the writings of uh, Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Mm. So the, the story is just fascinating when you think about it. You know, and it's like, okay, imagine if um, uh, one of the major inventor like uh, Tesla was actually a pen name and nobody knew actually who he was. So I, I picked Tesla, I guess I could have picked. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, another example more recent is um, Linus, Linus Torvald. So he came up with the Linux kernel in the early 1990s. And um, uh, he was, uh, you know, mailing lists and all that, but he's well known, he's never left and so on. But uh, so we have a very similar thing, but in this case for after two years, he's gone. And actually nobody understand or knows any clue about uh, who he is. Well, we might have some general clue. I mean, obviously someone who has a background in, uh, in this field, but uh, that's beyond, uh, beyond that, there's nothing else. And um, so I was reading, uh, just because of the story, I was very intrigued and I wanted to know a little bit more about how did, uh, what, how, what was discussed in your early beginning other than the white paper, because I read the white paper and I wanted to learn a little bit more about what he had to say. And that's, uh, I found it pretty intriguing, the, all the different conversation. And I says, well, if I had the, the desire for that, and I found it a lot of things that were very interesting in that conversation, so I thought probably there'll be other. And the other thing I understood is like, okay, it seems like he's never going to come back. And so the, all we're going to have is his writings. And in, from a historical perspective, that's pretty major. Uh, mm-hmm. The more time goes by and the more uh, it becomes uh, historical context, content uh, with the historical importance, basically. Instead of at the time, it was just, okay, we want to know, okay, explain to us how it works. And today it's much more uh, historical context. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
you know, the fact that he's, he's gone and we may never hear from him again. He's, he's the creator of this, you know, the, someone who kickstarted this, this revolution of, of blockchain technology. Uh, you know, even when I seen, I actually just came to a point in my Bitcoin journey where I'm like, I need to read everything Satoshi has written. So that's how I came across your book. I'm like, well, there's gotta be something out there that, you know, just already in a book compiled for me. I don't have to go on the internet and read internet pages. I just, I'd assume that someone, uh, I was hoping that someone had done this by now and, and you did. So thank you for that. Uh, I've now completed the, the book of Satoshi. It did take me a quite, quite a while than um, a usual book of the size to get through because some things were technical and I don't, mm. uh, you know, I, I'm pretty good with technology, but uh, I'm not, I don't have a full degree in computer science or anything like that. Uh, well, you know, what, what passed it, or, or actually, first I want to ask you, you know, how much time did you actually uh, spend you know, compiling the Satoshi text versus interpreting it? Uh, yeah, there was a combination of things, actually, because mm -hmm. grabbing it from uh, the different, uh, there were major, major two forms involved. The early forms was the uh, crypto mailing list or something like that. The, uh, the uh, blockchain, uh, the Bitcoin um, Dedicated Bitcoin form did not exist. Eventually, they moved to that. But um, so uh, it was okay first to grab those, and um, and the second is to figure out in what ordering I'm going to put them. You know, so obviously the chronological uh, ordering is the best. But I've discovered there's some topics that came up later on again that were linked again. So it didn't make sense to look at those i mean it made more sense to bring them even though there was two months apart to six months apart in conversation to actually put them in the same chapter that so that people can have the same kind of flow in regards to the same topic so that that was one of the aspect of it in terms of timing um well we're talking a few few months um maybe a matter of uh, six months i think from start to finish um including, I guess, the editing. At the time of the editing was um, 20, early 2014, uh, sorry, March 2014 or whatever. I was, you know, we're still working on the editing and all that. And then I am not Satoshi, Dor uh, Dor I'm not Dorian Satoshi, uh, Satoshi Dorian Nakamoto. And it's like, okay, <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> I wasn't seeing this coming. And, um, but already it was controversial topic about is it really him or um, that he mm -hmm. went out and decided to to talk or if it's um before his account got hacked and then you know it was, already it was controversial with just two year pause mm -hmm. so imagine a guy uh, like um treg right that many calls him treg wrong you know four months four years later and without any interaction with the prior mailing list and all that comes up and they say those things, oh, I am. I mean, it is so just controversial even more. And uh, so it's hilarious on that level of uh, in terms of human interaction and uh, complexities and all the, the drama that is around it, too. One of my questions was actually, you know, what passage to what passages to you were the most uh, infamous or controversial? So would you say that then, you know, his statement coming out and saying, I am not Dorian Nakamoto or, mm -hmm. because he's because he was dormant for so long? Yeah. Um, or, or what would you say are the most controversial passages? Uh, um, I would say the, he, the last two posts that he's done or in some combined together mm -hmm. or a controversial in some aspect. The one before he was complaining about, or not complaining, he didn't like the fact that um, uh, the reference that um, I, I can't remember which newspaper was um, suggesting that uh, WikiLeaks could be using mm -hmm. Bitcoin to get their funding. And so he says, okay, WikiLeaks kicked, um, kicked, kicked their hurt. Um, Ornette's Nest and uh, it's heading to us. Uh, I mean, the focus is going to be on them. And so you felt like it wasn't ready at the time. And uh, the next post after that, uh, he announced the, it's his last post, other than the, I'm not sorry, Dorian Nakamoto. And the last post where uh, he's just 
showing a release, the latest release. After that, he passed the ring to uh, to Gavin. So uh, that is one that is uh, interesting uh, on uh, on itself. Mm -hmm. There are a few others as well uh, where he's um, referencing, um, you know, um, not in distinctive word, but you know, making reference and how. Uh, typically, governments will be um, tar targeting central central aspect of anything that is centralized uh, if it doesn't fit their uh, agenda of control. And um, other than that, I would say the other two that I found interesting, you know, one on the science side of it, software side, and the other on the economic side. Um, one post is about <clears throat> how... Um, in chapter 13, actually, so where he talks about um, the, um, uh, sorry, the uh, Byzantine general problem. And um, the other is where it makes a reference that uh, about gold, you know, a gray metal, that boring and all that, um, except that it can be transmitted across the, uh, across the internet. Those two mm -hmm. together, and I found it's like a pearl for both the two part, because really Bitcoin, what it is, is an economic discovery, and as well as these uh, software engineering discovery, you know, at the same time, or discovery is, uh, uh, I mean, invention or new, uh, new way. Do you find any political biases in his writings, or do you think he was pretty neutral? It's well, when you read between the line, uh, you you can guess the guy is likely libertarian, but he never said anything outright. So, mm -hmm. but you know, you you get the the feeling, at least from our perspective, that it's um, that it's likely uh, this uh, this personal view, but he avoided anything directly uh, controversial on the political side, um, on the obvious at least, anything obvious. Yeah, I did notice that too. I know he yeah. said that, you know, this technology is probably appealing to libertarians, but he never said that he shared yeah. those values. Yeah. It seemed pretty strategic there. Yeah. Um, does, to, to you, does Satoshi allude to the use of altcoins or do you think he would be a, what is known as a Bitcoin maximalist? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there is a... Um, I think he understood that proof of work, uh, it's not a good idea to have um, 20 different coins running on proof of work. Um, and he made a reference in one of those, I forgot where, you, know, you probably remember, he made reference how um, perhaps if there was another, another like DN, a DNS kind of coin, or I can't remember which, uh, which uh, exactly, uh, which one, anyway. He, uh, the purpose of that other blockchain, uh, how to run it, how to, um, so he imagined where there would be a combination by miners of doing the mining of both blockchain together. And uh, which is something that could be possible where eventually uh, the software for Bitcoin is updated in a way that um, the miners could take advantage of um, mining two blockchain together at the same time. And um, so basically all they have to do, you know, every 10 minutes to run the SHA and so on, but there would be two separate, um, two separate uh, blockchain satisfied by this mining. So it was, uh, I'm doing a very, the tip of the iceberg conversation here, but um, it's, uh, it was leaning towards that direction as a way to facilitate having more than one blockchain. But um, it was concerned more about the proof of work he didn't bring up the subject of, oh, well, it's going to have its own currency and that's bad. We should only have one. There's no mention of that. So it's not a pure Bitcoin maximalist if we use the, the conversation that we hear today, which is only um, started to be more dominant in around 2017. Prior to that, the uh, Bitcoin was so powerfully dominant that uh, Bitcoin maximalists of today didn't felt like um, being in danger of being displaced. You know, there was 90% um, uh, the Bitcoin dominance was at 90% and plus, and it's only when Ethereum started to show up um, within gaining traction and a bunch of other altcoins 
that Bitcoin eventually in 2017 dropped down to 30% of uh, Bitcoin um, dominance. That actually, uh, I think, is one of the reasons it fueled the Bitcoin maximalist conversation. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that much of a, an interest. So obviously, it will be nice to know what Satoshi, uh, what's, what do we think of the, the, the layout, what we have, the landscape that we have with you know, so many, so many mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies and mm -hmm. it's um, overdone, uh, obviously. Um, there's too many just plain copycat, but it's uh, it'll be interesting to know uh, how you would have reacted to that. Mm -hmm. Now, now going back to 2017, 2016, 2015, you know these are kind of known as the block size wars years, and I think there was was there a time where Satoshi came and spoke out during that time, but people kind of wrote that off as not a real email. Was there another time yeah. he spoke out? Uh, well, there is, uh, yeah, so I wish I had contacted um, Mike Hearn uh, to ask him, hey, uh, do you have any converse, private conversation you had uh, with Satoshi that you're willing to make public? Uh, because that was not yet uh, big uh, as much of, a, um, uh, of an issue that uh, in uh, early at that time, or I think so, I, I, I maybe I'm wrong in terms of timing because we're talking about 2013 when I started um, collecting this stuff. Uh, so I can't be sure, but anyway, um, it would have been nice if um, those have been, because yeah, it's already controversial, uh, whatever as bit, um, that uh, Satoshi has talked about in terms of those things. Both sides has been using this as if it was the gospel. And um, as well, if Satoshi said this, that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. And uh, which I think is a very nice that uh, he left because he decentralized even more Bitcoin. You know, uh, the ownership of Bitcoin is decentralized now that, he's, that he left. And that's uh, something I... There's very, uh, all the other founders of other cryptocurrencies, they're all around, they're not there, they have not been um, uh, anonymous or whatever. We all know pretty much who they are. So Bitcoin has another uh, truly uh, interesting aspect on the psychological level of decentralization. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but it's uh, interesting on that side. So you would say that Satoshi's words should not be looked at as gospel and we have transcended satoshi nakamoto as a community it's always dangerous because he's mm -hmm. i mean he's he's human you know he's a person uh, as much as a hot shot that he was for coming up with this mm -hmm. uh, and the um the benefit of of um of something like this is to you know to um, always have you know the general public to to feel like the ownership is really decentralized. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the current market? Are we, uh, we where do we stand in a macro point of view? Yeah. Um, um, someone showed me um, a chart, a variation of um, uh, the price of gold um, in. Um, warmer Germany. So whenever you look at charts, what you see is, uh, you know, a hockey stick, you know, like this, it move up like crazy. But when you look at it from a day to day, uh, and if you wanted to day trade those things, uh, it would have been, uh, you would have 50% drop. The price of gold would drop by 50% one day and then rise up again and all that. And it says, wow, it's just, just it's crazy, you know. Uh, it will be rising up by 200% after crashing by 50% the, next, the day before and things. Anyway, extremely, extremely um, volatile. Now, that was all happening on a weekly or daily basis, those variations. But um, the point I want to make is that uh, we're, we're facing that on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, those variations or yearly basis. Uh, and it's really um, the, just, just the pandemic, or I mean, the, the pandemic that the lockdown, which were not required, 
you've, you look at that and how the, the ma management of financial management, economic incentive they've done and all that, the crash of the market, and then the, the push up back so rapidly and all that. It's, uh, it has affected and then it accelerated basically the problem I'm gonna have even more uh, this. And, and I cannot predict. So you asked me, so if I come back to your question, I, I have no clue. But <laughs> what I do know, it is a lot of volatility and overall the dollar will, will suffer. Will, all crypto, sorry, all fiat currencies will, will dive. You know, mm -hmm. in five years from now, it'll be just obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we get there? It's just like, um, you know, but um, I would say, you know, a lot of people only look concerned about Bitcoin. Some are only concerned about gold and silver. Um, I would um, definitely look at all those because in the pri their price movement and mm -hmm. eventually go uh, Bitcoin, which has been tied up with the Dow will uh, separate itself from the Dow in terms of um, correlation. At some point, um, you know, I think it's, it's a new form of asset as a safe haven kind of thing from inflation, but um, it's not recorded yet as a, uh, in some way as a complete. No, um, you, you know that with gold, you, you lose electric, electricity or whatever in terms of physical form in your end, you're not depending on anything. With Bitcoin, uh, you're depending on, well, to use it now. You're depending on the electricity in your neighborhood to work and then uh, so on. And so on your city or your region. So um, there's that aspect that is um, making things a little bit more concerning for the market, for those edge funds and all that is like when there is going to be really a problems in the systems or, uh, or even in uh, electricity delivery for some parts because of those. Uh, I'm not sure how things will be in Europe, for example, with the, uh, the gas line with, uh, with Germany. How would that affect eventually uh, their, um, their the relationship with uh, Bitcoin? But overall, we're talking about the extreme volatility and uh, major gains. So you're long Bitcoin. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about something that um, cannot be devalued. There will be only 21 Bitcoin. And, and we've just seen there was a big controversy just for the size of the block. Big controversy. So there's no way. There's absolutely no way there'll be controversy about uh, as something major as changing the number of Bitcoin. You know, if, if that was just a problem just to change the block size, imagine how it would be completely impossible mm -hmm. to change the number of coins. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think you know anybody would want to subscribe to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody. I mean, it kind of goes against the the fundamentals. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's good that we have. You know, I think it's good that there's innovation in the space. I think it's yeah. good that there's the one ultimate coin that we're very safe with when it comes to making updates to it. I think it's all good. I like to talk mm. to ever to everybody and yeah. you know see what everybody thinks and you know that's just uh, yeah for the innovation yeah. I'm mm -hmm. actually uh, interested in to, I, I had a conversation with a gold bug at some point and because, uh, you know, you know, they have some so many arguments about, oh, well, there is, uh, you know, 2000 coins and uh, or they could change the code to make it more than 21 million or whatever. And uh, all those arguments like, well, you know, I, I, have, I have to bring them up, you know, to um, those. Mm -hmm. They're just reading the surface of um, CNBC. Um, you know, negative points that they call and they grab and that's it. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. You definitely see a lot of that. Uh, Phil, do you, do you read other sites, uh, Bitcoin crypto sites? Like do you have any favorite resources, books, podcasts? Um, well, it, it is, um, I have, uh, well, the Bitcoin standard is good. Uh, it, it depends on your background. And uh, if you've, start with um, very little information about the Austrian school of economy, then you're really going to be, uh, you know, well-versed with that. It's going to be you know, covering those things. Uh, the blockchain, if you're more inter interested too, 
that too is a very good book in terms of that episode. And someone told me that it's sort of like the part two, you know, the sequel to my book. You know, my book is covering the early years mm -hmm. and that sort of covers, you know, the, all the controversy that follow up short, very shortly. You know, we're talking about three years, four years after Satoshi mm -hmm. left. Do you know, do you know the author of that book? Have you ever oh, spoken? Have you ever Jonathan spoken? Beer? No, I, I never talked to him. Okay, yeah, because I read that book too, and I, I okay. very, I enjoyed it a lot and learned okay. a lot from it. And okay. you know, I, I put it up there with the, one of the one of the my favorite ones. Okay. Um, I tried reaching out to uh, I think Jonathan Beer is the author yeah. on that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get anything back on Twitter. He doesn't seem to be okay. very active. So okay, okay. Um, um, another third book, and it's really important for me. Uh, it's uh, the creature from Jekyll Island from G. Edward Griffin, which dates back to the 1990s. I read that in the, somewhere in the 2008, 2009, and uh, boy. <laughs> so this, this is the history of Federal Reserve, but it also goes back to uh, 14th century uh, mm -hmm. Italy, you mm -hmm. know? And so you learn a lot about um, the kind of movement, and you mentioned now Florence and um, what was the other city? Uh, Venice and Florence were the uh, London and New York of today mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, I'm reading something that goes into that too. Uh, the Seventh Property, Bitcoin okay. and the Monetary Revolution by Eric Yakes. And yeah, that does, it goes through the history. Uh, the first, the first, I don't know, maybe third of the, of the book goes uh -huh. through the history, uh -huh. gives you, you know, the, the, uh, the central bank creation and the Federal yeah. Reserve history, uh, uh -huh. which I think is good. I, I think it is, you, it's so true that you need to understand money before you yeah. try to understand Bitcoin. And if you don't, yeah. if you, if you don't get it, uh, uh -huh. it's going to be really hard to really get Bitcoin. You might yeah. get people invest in it, but they're never going to have that, uh, yeah. deep conviction. I feel like. Yeah, but the, the book, uh, The Creature is really thick and okay. it covers things that uh, revise history of Nap Napoleon War. There's angles in that we'd never, never heard of. Mm -hmm. The Civil War, American Civil War, uh, how they actually the English and the French were actually rooting for the South because they wanted to divide the U.S. So that'll be divided conquer, you know. And uh, all those things. And uh, while the Russian were helping the, the, uh, the North, to stay, so the, the Russian uh, Navy stayed and helped the blockade and to prevent any um, uh, the French and the uh, English to interfere in any way. So it was wow, what I never heard of that. And again, it's another twist into um, into those history. You know, and if you like history, then you'll um, you learn it from a from another angle, including the uh, financial aspect behind those wars. Yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely check that out. And uh, we'll have to touch base again on and uh, have mm -hmm. you back here on the Haven Report. I'll, uh, I'll take this opportunity to show everybody the uh, my copy that you sent me here. The, and uh, the message that you put in here, dear Brad, love that name. Love the name, the Haven Report. It'll be good for the next 120 years. Enjoy the read. Fill <laughs> champagne. He's, uh, even included a book of Satoshi bookmark uh -huh. here. And there was a few uh, what it, Venezuelan, what are they called? Bolivars. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> in there as <laughs> to use people as, to buy coffee. Huh? <laughs> exactly. So uh, as a representation of the inflation uh, down there in Venezuela. And so that was that was cool and very creative of you. So I much appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to open it up to you if you have any final thoughts, any words of wisdom for my listeners uh, and just let us know where we can follow you. Uh, they can follow me on um, on Twitter, egg underscore the scrambler. Um, and uh, uh, I guess my website, reninvestment.com, but it's not related to uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, but uh, mostly Twitter, egg underscore the scrambler. Awesome, man. Uh, thanks for coming on the Habit Report podcast, Phil. Thank you so much, Ben. It was really good. Thank you all for listening to the Having Report podcast. Please like and subscribe to the show, share it with a friend, check out our show notes below for more about our guests and some sweet crypto coupons, and we'll see you back next time.